everyone. Um, this is Gentle Yoga from the Woodlands Yoga Studio. My name is Lisa and uh, Sue is going to be demoing the class for today. So we're going to start seated today. And so if you can find yourself in a comfortable seated position, um, you know, I like to have my hips a little bit elevated. Uh, you can sit up on a, a, a pillow or a bolster if you have it at home or you can even sit up on a couple of blocks. So find yourself in your comfortable seat and you can just place your hands in your lap with your palms up or down, whatever feels good for you, and go ahead and close your eyes. And as you close your eyes, we will just drop into the stillness in our bodies. One of the things I really love about yoga is it allows us to meet ourselves on the mat in our physical body where we are and usually that's where we are in our life, where we are in our mind, by connecting our physical body to our breath. It also allows us to steady the breath and steady the mind. We learn a lot about ourselves on the mat. We learn that we have constrictions sometimes in our body and sometimes those are the constrictions that we sometimes have in life. Maybe the way that we think about things. So giving ourselves this opportunity right now, I mean, as much as we don't like that we have to stay at home, what kind of opportunities do we have here? Maybe the opportunity to read a book that we've always wanted to read or connect with a friend or write a good letter or start a blog. So looking at it from that way, sometimes we can meet ourselves and meet our creative side. Go ahead and um, begin to bring your awareness into your breath taking some deep cleansing breaths. Notice how your breath brings a deeper sense of connection. And as you lengthen your inhales and your exhales, notice how the inhale leads directly into the exhale. And there's a gentle pause before you begin the next cycle of breath. By observing our breath, we get to this place where we really get to observe how things begin, have a natural growth period, they stabilize, decline, and then there's a termination process, just like anything else in life. So observing this beautiful breath as you inhale, the beginning, the growth, the stabilization, and then your exhale, the decline of the breath, and then finally the breath ends. We'll stay here for about another minute, just focusing the full awareness and attention on the breath. And then just come back to the natural rhythm of your breath and bring your hands together in front of your hearts. So we'll just, um, we'll go through one round of OM, just beginning the class with an OM. And the OM is such a beautiful sound to help just the vibration, the vibratory quality of OM helps connect us with everything in the whole universe. The universe is vibrating through the sound of OM and it just gives us that connection. So go ahead and take a nice deep inhale, cleansing breath. Exhale everything out. Inhaling to Om. If it feels okay for you, make an intention for your practice today. Maybe your intention is just to focus on your breath or maybe it's just to experience joy, whatever you want it to be. Breathe that intention in on your next inhale. And as you exhale, release it out so that it reaches every single cell of your body floating on the wave of your breath. 
Place your hands in your lap and open your eyes. <clears throat> I'm gonna move out of the way so I can kind of guide Sue, who is um, very generously my demo person today. All right, so go ahead and prong your right fingertips down into the mat and inhale, bring your left arm up toward the ceiling, stretching tall, exhale, bring your left hand over to the left, stretching through the left side body. Notice how Sue really has the left hip pressing down so she can get more length. Stay there for another couple of breaths. Inhale, really feel that stretch. Exhale, good. On your next inhale, bring your arm back up toward the ceiling and exhale, float it down slowly like you're floating through water. Inhale, bring the right arm up. Prong the left hand down. Exhale, bring the right arm more over to the left side and really get that space through the right side body. Take a couple of deep breaths here. Inhale, feel the length in the right side body. And exhale, one more deep breath. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, bring your hand back up toward the ceiling and exhale, float it down. Good. So we're gonna do some gentle twists Inhale and just twist over to the right. Good, and exhale and maybe inhale, lengthen the spine and maybe even turn your head if it feels okay. Good, take one more nice deep cleansing breath and as you exhale, unwind. And inhale to the other side. Take a couple of deep breaths here. Inhale for the length. Exhale, maybe turning the head if that feels okay, but it doesn't have to be a neck thing. Good, another deep inhale and exhale, unwind. Good. So just placing your hands in your lap, just opening up through the neck. Inhale here, exhale, bring your chin to your chest. Good. Inhale and just very slowly bring your right ear to your right shoulder, moving with your breath. Exhale, the chin to the chest. Inhale, the left ear to the left shoulder. And exhale, chin to the chest. Good. Do a couple more of those, just moving at your own pace. Opening up the back of the neck and the sides of the neck. And then bring your head back up above your shoulders on your inhale. Good. Now you're gonna stretch your hands forward. Just keep your legs crossed. Inhale, bring your fingertips forward and just kind of walk them forward on your inhale, stretching out however long it feels good for you. Keep lengthening through the crown of the head. Inhaling here and then exhale, release your head down. Just relax. Can you relax your body at the same time though? Draw your shoulder blades together and try to get length through the crown of the head. Inhale lengthening and exhale fold maybe a little bit deeper on your next inhale bring your hands over to the right stretching again through the left side body good inhaling here and exhaling inhale back to center exhale and then inhale all the way over to the left take a couple of deep breaths there Good, inhale, come back to center. And then come on up to all fours. So bring your hands back up, coming up to all fours. And you may wanna place a blanket underneath your knees. You can decide, but take your time. We'll be on the knees and you may need your blocks up at the top of your mat. <coughs> if you don't have blocks at home, you can use little um, pillows or maybe books or something like that. But I'm gonna show you with blocks uh, what I'm talking about, okay. So just coming in to set up for all fours to come into cat-cow. So checking, uh, checking yourself, making sure your wrists, elbows, and shoulders are in line, knees are underneath the hips. You can curl your toes under like Sue has, or you can place the tops of your feet down if you want more length in the spine. So either way you wanna do it. If you curl your toes under, it gives you a little bit more stability. Inhale here. Exhale slowly, bring your chin into your chest, round the back, lifting your lower back up toward the ceiling. And then very slowly inhale, tilt the tailbone up toward the ceiling, heart forward and head back. So we'll do a few rounds of this in, uh, cat cow pose, inhaling and exhaling. Move at your own pace with your breath. 
I'll always remind you of the inhale and the exhale, but take your time. As you're moving through cat-cow, when you inhale, press your hands and your knees away from each other, getting more length. And as you exhale, bring your hands and your knees toward each other, helping you lift up and maybe it activates your abdominal muscles. Take two more cat-cows. <clears throat> so from here, we'll come into spinal balance. So come back to all fours, and on your inhale, extend the right foot back, but curl the toes under, just place them on the mat. So you can stay just like that, okay, if you need to for stability, and extend the, right, the left arm out with the left thumb up. So just like that is perfect. Inhaling and exhaling, you're really using your abdominal muscles, or you can extend the right foot back, lifting it off of the mat. You see how Susan, a really nice long line, leaning from the crown of her head all the way down to her heel, finding even more length. It's almost like you're stepping on the wall behind you with your right foot. Inhale here and exhale, place your hand and your knee back down. Good, we'll take two cat cows here. Inhale and exhale round. Moving with your breath one more time. Coming back to tabletop, inhale and extend the left leg back, curl the toes under first to get the stability. And then when you're ready on your next inhale, extend the right arm out, thumb up. Finding that length in the spine, if you want to, you can lift the left leg up, really stretching that left foot back behind you, getting as much length as you can. Inhale here and exhale, bring your hand and your knee back down. Good job. So we'll take it to the other side. We're gonna add on, inhale, right leg, left arm. Good. So you can stay right here, or if you want to, move with your breath, and as you exhale, bring your elbow to your knee. Round your back like you do in cat-cow. Inhale and extend out long. Exhale, round, elbow to knee. Good, one more time. Inhale, extend out long. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, extend out long, and then place your hand and your knee back down. Nice. Switching sides. Inhale, left leg, right arm. Exhale, round the back. Elbow to knee. Inhale, extend out long. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, extend out long. And exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, extend out long. And then the hand and the knee come back down. Good. So we'll take a little cat-cow here again. Inhale, exhale, round. Just two times. Inhale, and exhale, round. So take your knees wide, and then we'll sit back into child's pose. So notice how Sue is really getting her hips back there, but she's gonna keep her forearms off of the mat and come up onto her finger pads. Keeping length in the spine, drawing the shoulder blades together, and exhale, do you notice how as she draws her shoulder blades together, she's getting even more length in the back, actually. Good, inhaling here and exhaling. Still stretching through the side body. As you inhale, bring your arms off of the mat over to the right. Good, really press the right hand into the mat, but stretch really long through the left arm as long as you can and keep breathing there. Sue has her left hip really secure and back, so notice if it came up, if it did, press it back more and take another deep breath. Inhale and come back to center. Exhale, inhale over to the left. Same thing, other side. So stretching as far as you can through your right arm and take a couple more deep breaths there. And inhale and come back to center. Good. And then just come up to all fours. So this is where you might need your blocks, okay? So you can have your blocks up there at the top. You're gonna to step the right foot forward to come into a lunge. And you can have the blocks on either side so that you can really draw your shoulder blades together. If you curl the left toes under, you have more stability. If you place the top of the left foot down, it gives you a little bit more length. Good. So you can decide, do you see how her toes are curled under or the top down? So
So once you are secure in your legs, so take a moment to make sure that your right foot is pressing down into the mat, left knee, left top of the foot, or if you have your toe curled under. And then inhale and bring your arms up toward the ceiling. Inhale and rise, good. Exhale and bring the right hand down and open up, kind of in a twist. Inhale, bring both arms up toward the ceiling, stretch tall. Exhale, bring the left hand down and open up. Good, inhale, both arms up toward the ceiling, stretch tall. One more time each side. Exhale, open up at the right. And you may not be able to twist very far. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, open up to the left. Good, inhale, both arms up. And exhale, bring both hands down and step back with the left and with the right knee. And inhale, the left leg forward. So coming into this low lunge, so Notice, again, getting your stability here, stabilizing through the left foot, the big toe mound. Decide if you want to curl the right toes under or place the top of the foot down. And whenever you're ready, inhale, lift the arms up. So get that nice length in the spine. Inhaling, exhale, open up through the left hand. Good. Oh, comes down. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Ah, there you go. Good. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, right arm down. Good. Just like a dance. Inhale, arms rise. Good, one more time each side. Just moving with your breath, not with my count. Good, and inhale, arms rise. Exhale, both hands down. Good, and step back. Nice. So um, you can have, you can use your blocks on this next one. You're gonna curl your toes under and come into Varajasana. Okay, so this is a real nice stretch through the bottoms of the feet. So you see how Sue's toes are totally curled under, even the pinky toe. It's so really getting a nice stretch. It's great for the plantar uh, part of the foot. We're gonna take a couple of deep breaths there. If it doesn't feel okay for you, that's so much pressure, you can have your hands on your blocks to lift your bottom a little bit more off of your heels to give it less pressure. So you decide where you wanna be, or you can inhale and bring your arms up toward the ceiling. Good, so that's, you can choose wherever you wanna be. We're gonna be here for about three more breaths, so find your happy space. Taking a few more deep breaths. Good, nice breathing. And then exhale, bring your hands down. And we'll come up to standing from here. So if you want to come into a balance, you can, or you can stand up just like that. Taking your um, blanket off to the side, bring your blocks up to the top of the mat. So taking the blocks up to the top of the mat, we're just gonna stand so that our feet are hip width distance apart, and inhale, bring your arms up toward the ceiling. So clasp your hands together and squeeze your biceps into your ears and feel for a minute as you press your feet down into the mat, you're also lengthening the crown of your head up toward the ceiling. So we're getting a little oppositional force here. So from your hips all the way down to your feet, your muscles are hugging to the bones and you're really growing tree roots. And as you, from your hips all the way up to your fingertips, you're really lengthening a lot longer. Good, inhale and exhale, bring your hands down to heart center. Good. So using the blocks, if you want to, we're gonna do a couple of what I call half sun salutations, okay? So inhale and bring your arms up toward the ceiling, moving again with your breath. Exhale, bring your hands down through heart center, bend your knees, place your hands on the blocks or on the earth. Inhale and lengthen halfway. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees and bring your chest toward your thighs. And then inhale, bring your hands onto your waist, press your feet into the mat. Inhale all the way up, bring your arms up toward the ceiling. Exhale, fold, hands through heart center, hands on the blocks or the earth. Inhale and come up halfway. Good, exhale, fold, bend your knees, bring your chest to your thighs, and then place your hands on your hips. So feel how strong you are on your feet as you inhale and come back up. So that's a safe way to do it for your back. Bring your arms up toward the ceiling. Exhale, hands down through heart center. 
Very nice. So now, um, Sue, if you wouldn't mind facing the camera so they can see. So feet are hip width distance apart. Inhale, bring your arms up toward the ceiling. Clasp your right hand around your left wrist and really get some length there. Inhale there. Exhale, your hands over to the right and maybe send your hips over to the left, getting a little bit more space. So pressing down evenly with the feet. Inhale, maybe open your heart a little bit more toward the ceiling. Yeah, good. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, float your hands down like they're floating through water. Good. Inhale, arms rise all the way up, clasping the other wrist, so the right wrist. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, over to the left. And maybe send your hips over to the right. Good. Pressing both feet evenly into the mat. Inhale, maybe open the heart a little more. Good. See how Sue's shoulders are kept back, her head's even back a little bit more. Good. Inhale, arms rise, and exhale, float the hands down. Good. All right, thank you. So back up to the top of the mat. We'll move a little bit now, holding onto the blocks. Inhale and arms rise. Exhale, fold. Good, bend your knees. Bring your blocks so that they're even with your toes. Inhale here and exhale. Step the right foot back about halfway, but open the toes. So we're gonna come into pyramid pose. There you go. And then straighten the left leg. So notice how Sue is really pressing down evenly with both feet, so the big toe mound of the left foot and the pinky toe side of the right foot, lengthening through the crown of the head as she's up halfway. Inhale here and exhale, fold over your left leg. So folding over the left leg, so she's got her hands on blocks, but also your hands could be on the mat. Good, we'll take two deep breaths here, inhaling and exhaling. More deep inhale and exhale. Good, inhale and length, lengthen up halfway. So you're gonna take the right block and place it down on the mat flat. Place your right hand down on the block. Take your left hand to your hip. Draw your left shoulder back. Lengthen through the crown of your head and begin to twist. So your left hand can stay right there on your hip or you can bring your left arm up toward the ceiling, revolve triangle pose. Now you may not need the block, maybe your hand is on the ground, but if you're on the block, it just gives you more length. Keep bringing your shoulder back, your head back, opening up the heart. One more deep inhale here, and exhale, slowly fold back. So inhale and come up halfway again. Bend both knees and then step the right foot forward to meet the left and fold over your legs. Good, inhale, arms rise, bring your arms all the way up toward the ceiling and exhale, bring hands down to heart center. So with your hands down to heart center now, close your eyes for just a moment, bring your awareness into your feet. Lift your toes up off of the mat and feel your feet pressing evenly into the mat, all four corners of each foot and then lower your toes back down. As your eyes are closed and your next inhale, bring back to mind your intention you set for yourself today. Where is yoga meeting you on the mat today? How are you feeling in your physical body? Breathe that intention in again. Exhale, release it out, allowing it to reach every cell in your body. Open your eyes, inhale, arms rise. Reach up for something great. Exhale, forward fold. Heart goes first. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Come up halfway. And exhale, prepare to send the left foot back. So opening up for this pyramid pose. Straighten the right leg. And take a moment to, to check your hips out. So you really want the right hip to shift back as the left hip shifts forward, lengthening through the crown of the head and exhale, fold over your right leg. So your hands can go down on the, on the earth if that feels better, or they can be elevated on blocks. Wherever you are is fine, really pressing down with the big toe mound of the right foot, pinky toe side of the left foot, and then keep breathing here for one more breath. Good. And then as you inhale, come up halfway, placing the left block down flat now. If you don't have a block, your hand can go on the mat, that's fine. 
and then place the right hand on your hip. Draw your shoulder blades together so you're really opening up through the right shoulder. Take it slow, and then whenever you're ready, after you're twisting, you can bring the right arm up toward the ceiling in this revolved triangle. Wherever place that you are is fine. If you want to have your, keep your hand on your waist, you can. So keep drawing the shoulder blades together, keep bringing your head back, keep opening your heart. And as your legs are, are securely down on the mat, this allows the top portion of your body to open up like this. One more deep inhale, and exhale, fold. Good, inhale, lengthen out halfway, bend both knees, and then step the, right, the left foot forward, and exhale, fold over your legs, good. Take your feet wide now. So taking them wider than hip width distance apart. Toes point forward, grab opposite elbows, and allow this top portion of your body to hang here. So you can see, you know, Sue can almost also put her fingertips on the ground if she wanted to, or she can grab opposite elbows and rock back and forth. If you need to, you can bend your knees here. Shake your head yes, shake your head no. Notice how the steadiness of your legs allows the top portion of your body to just really go here. Take two more breaths, releasing and letting go. Good, one more breath. So now bring your fingertips to the mat and take a little bend in the knees. So opening up here, we're gonna use the block again and put the block down flat, like right in front of your face. If you don't have a block at home, you can just have your hand right down in front of your face, okay? So you're going to take the left hand down on top of the block, bring your right hand to your hip, and bend the left knee, deep left knee bend. And we're opening up again. So this is kind of like we did just in that revolved triangle pose, really stacking the shoulders on top of each other. Inhale, bringing the right arm up if that feels okay. Otherwise, keep the right hand on the hip. Take a couple of deep breaths here as you're continuing to open up. We tend to, if we're sitting around a lot, we get really stagnant in the side of the body. So these twists are really great. They're also great for digestion. So take one more deep inhale here and exhale, fold. Good, switching sides. Right hand down, left hand to the hip, bend the right knee, draw the shoulder blades together. Do you see how nicely they're stacked there? Inhale, bring the left arm up, good. Inhaling here and exhaling, bring the palate back, opening up through the heart. One more nice deep inhale and exhale, fold. Good, now bend both knees again and just fold over your legs. So I invite you, you can do two things here. You can take your hands to your hips to bend the knees and come on up to standing or you can roll your body up one vertebrae at a time. If you roll your body, it's a little bit harder on your hips, so you just decide. Good, and then bring your arms up toward the ceiling. Exhale, hands down to heart center, and bring your feet together. Good. Okay, so we're gonna take some balance now. So we'll come into a tree pose, and you can use um, the wall, or you can use, a Sue will pretend like she's got her hand on the wall if you wanna see what we're talking about. So she's gonna have her left hand touching the wall. So really ground into the left foot. Imagine that the left foot is spreading out like a pancake on the floor, just really getting a lot of surface area. And then come onto the ball of the right foot. So then maybe bring your right hand to your hip. So you can feel now, what does it feel like to be on the left foot as we get to ready to balance? And then you can turn your right knee open and maybe place your right heel against your, right at your left ankle. So that's one option for tree pose. Another option to bring, bring your foot up to your calf or your inner thigh. We're gonna bypass the knee. Yeah, so any place is good. And we'll stay for about three to five breaths. <laughs> yeah, and you know, when you're in a tree, when you're in tree pose, you're just like a regular tree out there in the wind, you know, wobbling around, right? Yeah, wherever you wanna go. It may not happen today on the left leg. <laughs> <laughs> See, it happens. <laughs> so, let me go over here. There you and, go. And, there we go. Yay. Yeah, so using, using the wall is so great because you've always got it there for you. And you can even just have your pinky on the wall. And then bringing your hands back down. 
and switching sides. Let's see how the right leg is. <laughs> So really spread your right toes out. You can always have your right fingertips against the wall, and then you can bring your left foot in. So heel can just be right there into the ankle. We wanna to touch bone to bone. And you can bring the um, left fingertips up toward the ceiling if you want to, like a tree. You can bring your left foot into the, into the, um, the calf or into the thigh. There we go. Inhale, bring your arms up. You want to look at something that's not moving. So if you're, you have a dog or a cat that's walking around, don't look at them. <laughs> 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 um, see, even teachers <laughs> fall out of tree pose, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Boy. <laughs> see how grounded we all are right now? Yes. There you go. There I go. Awesome. All right. Okay, so good job. That was nice. Thank you, Sue. Good job. All right, so we're going to come down to taking a seat, but we're going to do a little balance to do it. So if you wouldn't mind facing that way. So um, taking your feet so that they're hip width distance apart and just come up and balance by lifting your heels up. So lifting your heels up. Bring your arms out in front of you. So now notice how Sue's in a straight line all the way from the crown of her head. Her shoulders, her hips are all lined up together. And then just bend your knees and slowly slide down like you're sliding down a wall. Good. How far? Now all the way down. And then if you want to, you can take a seat. Well, she can do that. I can't. And you know, it's, it's, I have to put my hands out in front of me. So taking a Navasana pose, we'll go straight into Navasana. So making a V with your body. Extend your legs. You can have your legs extended out there, or you can hold your hands underneath your knees. We'll breathe here. We're going to do three of them. So find your Navasana, inhaling and exhaling. Just two more breaths here. And exhale, bring your toes down. Take a break. Hug everything in. And whenever you're ready, Navasana number two. Draw the shoulder blades together, really zip and wrap through the rectus abdominis muscles. You can extend the arms out, you can extend the legs. Taking a nice deep breath here. Two more breaths. And exhale, bend the knees. Take a little break. Good, one more time. Last Navasana, make it the best one. You can even do a low boat. She'll show you how to do that if you want to. Low boat, yeah. If you want to, that really gets the lower abdominal muscles. You can play around with it. We'll wait for you. <laughs> Take a couple more breaths there. And then exhale, bring your hands down. So just take your fingertips back behind you, draw your shoulder blades together, and then just kind of release through those abdominal muscles. Lengthen through the crown of the head and just allow your neck to even open up a little bit. And then extend your legs out long, preparing for Paschimottanasana. So take a moment to move the fleshy part of your bottom out of the way. Flex your feet, bringing your toes back towards you. Good. And then you can slowly, as you lengthen through the crown of the head here, Hinging at the hips, imagine that you have a little flashlight in front of your heart pointing at your toes. And then just continue to work your way down. Maybe you grab your feet if you can. And then once you get there, you can lower your head. We just don't want to round through the shoulders, but once you get there, you can lower your head. We're going to stay for eight breaths, okay? So find that you are really comfortable because the longer that we breathe here, the more we can kind of ground in. It's a very grounding pose and our body begins to relax and receive the pose and allow the rest of our body to let go wherever you're feeling tight. A couple more breaths here. Take a moment to feel how the ground is supporting you here. Underneath your, sh underneath your heels, underneath your shins, your calves, the backs of your legs, your bottom. Notice the surface that is touching all the parts of where you are sitting right now and how maybe you feel like with each exhale you're sinking a little deeper into the earth. 
yoga meets us where we are in life, but every single place allows us to feel the support. And then inhale slowly, come all the way back up. So keep your legs extended, but you're gonna inhale and bring the right knee in. So hug the right knee in for just a minute, and then keep the left foot extended out. You're gonna prong the right fingertips down, and then inhale, lift the left arm up toward the ceiling, getting some space, coming into a twist. Exhale, and just, yeah, you can either hook the elbow or you can hug the knee in. Notice how when Sue hugged the knee in, she's getting more length in her spine. So notice that. She really has her spine up nice and tall, so she's getting a good twist. She can continue to twist with each breath. Inhale and lengthen, and exhale, twist a little bit more. Maybe twisting through the neck, maybe bringing the chin over toward the right shoulder. Keep pronging the right fingertips down into the mat, keeping the left foot in a flex position. One more breath here. Inhale here and exhale slowly unwind. So extending that leg out. Now shake your legs out for just a moment. Just shake them out, giving them a little bit of a break and then inhale and bring the left knee in. Hugging the left knee in, really flexing the right foot so prong the left fingertips down. And so you do that so that you can get more length and you can really begin to lengthen, I guess, your head up toward the ceiling. Inhale, bring the right arm up and exhale, either hook the elbow or hug the knee in. Drawing the shoulder blades together here, inhale and exhale, continue to twist. The twists are really great for um, relieving any of those kind of muscle you know, constraints that we have in the back, but also they're great for digestion great for kidney function. There's so many wonderful things with twists. Keep breathing here. Inhale, lengthening and exhale. Continue to twist a little bit, even if it's just a millimeter. One more nice deep breath. Exhale. Inhale, lengthen and exhale. Unwind nice and slow. Extending both legs out again. Shake your legs out. Good. You're gonna bring the right foot in, preparing for John Ustashasana. So bring the sole of the right foot to touch the left thigh. So John Ustashasana is a little bit of a twist, okay? Because you need to line your heart up with your knee. With, yeah, your, your heart up with your left knee. So notice how Sue had to twist a little bit to do that. So you may feel it when you're folding forward. Maybe you feel it um, right in that space in the lower right back or maybe you feel it in your shoulder. So just notice, inhale here, exhale, fold. Yeah, so you can take your right hand and wrap the right fingers around the left pinky toes, really prong the left, left fingertips into the mat to get a little bit deeper of a twist. Inhaling and exhaling. Notice how with each inhale, as Sue takes that nice deep breath, she's getting more length. And with each exhale, she can get a little closer to her knee. Keep breathing here, inhaling and exhaling. Yeah, if you want to, if you have the flexibility, you can clasp your hands around your foot all the way around, clasping onto your right wrist. Otherwise, you can use a strap um, to hold onto your foot, or you can just have your hands on the, on the ground. One more deep breath, inhale here, and exhale. Inhale, rise slowly. Good, exhale, extend the right leg out and switch sides. So coming to the left side now for Janu Sirsasana. Take some time to set yourself up here, really getting sure that both the uh, feet are flexed, and then turn your body so that your heart and knee are lined up. Inhale here and exhale, fold. Take the left hand to the pinky toe side of the right foot. Prong the right fingertips down. Inhale here and exhale, fold. Good. Taking some nice deep breaths here. Good. 
same thing, just like we did before. So as your body begins to release in these pose, if you wanna take it a little further, you can. You can clasp your hands around, around the foot if that's where you can go. So decide what's best for you. Keep breathing. With each inhale, your body gets expansion and so it lengthens naturally. Janusirsasana is a very grounding pose, so allow it to ground you as you get more length in the top portion of your body. It also grounds your mind. And then inhale, come all the way back up, exhale, extend both legs out. So now we're gonna prepare to come down to the back. So you can take your feet so that your heels are at the end of your mat. And we'll do, this is a, okay, well if you just go ahead and lie down. <laughs> that's good. Is that <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, All right. Ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so go ahead and lie down. So coming down, we're gonna prepare for taking some bridge poses. So take a moment to- Do I need a block? And no. No, you're good. Enough. Okay. So taking your feet so that they're hip width distance apart, you can bring your heels back a little bit more towards your bottom if that feels okay. Draw your shoulder blades together underneath you and bend your arms so that you have these little robot hands and the backs of your arms are really pressing into the mat. So when we come into these poses, you do not want to move your head or your neck. Just keep them completely stable. Inhale and you'll lift up through your heart first to lift your pelvis up and notice how your knees have to come forward. So bringing your knees forward, get your glutes and your hamstrings on board. And then if it feels okay, you can clasp your hands underneath you, drawing your shoulders a little closer together. Pressing your feet into the mat, lifting your hips up even higher. We'll take two deep breaths here. Feel the strength in this bridge pose. It's like you are a cement bridge here. Your body is completely strong, supporting you all the way from your shoulders all the way to your knees, creating this nice, beautiful arch. Inhale here. Good. Now, on the next exhale, just lower the hips a little bit. And go ahead and sway your hips back and forth from side to side. Imagining here like you're a suspension bridge. So swaying your hips back and forth from side to side. Notice how you can kind of release and let go a little bit in your back. Inhale here and exhale, roll all the way down. Good, so we'll do that two more times. So find yourself that you're in your bridge, pressing the backs of the arms down into the mat. Inhale, lift up. Clasp the hands if you want to really pressing the feet into the mat. Notice how Sue's heart is coming toward her chin, but her chin is staying where it is, so her head does not come forward. Keep breathing here, pressing the feet into the mat a little bit deeper, maybe lifting the hips up a little bit more as the knees come forward a little bit more. Good. And then exhale, bring the hips down a little bit, and again, sway the hips back and forth from side to side. So notice how when you do that, it helps release a little bit of any tension that might be going on in the lower back, surrounding the hips. Good, and then lower all the way back down. Last one, so make it your best one. Decide what you wanna do here. Whenever you're ready, inhale, press up into bridge pose. You can clasp your hands together, lift your heart up, keep pressing the feet into the mat. So glutes are on board. That's the big muscles at your bottom, hamstrings on board. Good. And then if you see how Sue's kind of drawing her elbows even closer together, it gives her a little bit more height because the shoulders are getting out of the way there. Good. And then exhale and lower just the hips halfway so you can sway them back and forth from side to side again. And then lower all the way down. Good. And then from here, inhale and bring, oh yeah, do yeah, do your knees back and forth like that. Bring the arms out to the side. It probably feels really good. It does. <laughs> and then from here, inhale the right knee in and hug it in. 
So flex the right foot and then bring the right knee into center and then take it over more toward your right shoulder. And just notice which place feels better. Yeah, and then come into a half happy baby, taking your hand yeah, onto to the center and notice how Sue's kind of pumping up and down and maybe your right thigh reaches the mat and you can kind of take your left knee out to the left a little bit to open up a little bit more if that feels okay and rock back and forth on your pelvis. If it feels okay with you, you can extend the right leg. Now Sue can, she's like super duper stretchy person over here and she can extend hers really long, but you can also just keep your knee bent and extend it just a little bit. That's fine too. Take a couple of deep breaths there. And then inhale and extend both legs out long. Bring your arms overhead, just move with your breath. Extend both legs out long and exhale, bring the left knee in and bend the right foot, I mean the right knee, placing the right foot down, good. So bring the left knee back and just hug it in and decide, it, does it feel better to come straight back or over to the left a little bit and then prepare for half happy baby. Finding your half happy baby uh, go ahead and rock on the pelvis back and forth. Notice that that feels good. And then play around with this. You can extend the left leg out if that feels good. If it doesn't feel good, keep the knee bent a little bit and just breathe through it. What feels good for you here? And keep breathing. And then release that and inhale, bring your arms up and overhead again, stretch long, point both toes. Yeah, and really bring your arms up and take a couple of deep breaths here. And then as you exhale, bring the right knee in again. Keep the left leg extended. So bring the right knee in, take your left hand to the outside of the right knee and take your right leg all the way over your body, all the way across. And then bring your right arm out long, like into a T, look over your right shoulder. So in a deep twist here, if you want more of a twist, you can bring your right knee closer to you. And that just gives you a little bit more of a twist, okay? Um, if you want a little bit less, then just take your uh, right knee more closer to your foot. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And keep breathing there. Right hip comes up so that you can come into this twist. One more nice deep breath here. Inhale, come back to center. Hug the right knee in again. Good. Exhale. Inhale, straighten both legs and arms. And exhale, bring the left knee in. Hug the left knee in. Take your right hand to the outside of the left knee and bring the left knee all the way across the body and over. Opening up through the left arm, look over the left shoulder. Left hip is up in the air and take a few deep breaths here. And then inhale, bring the left knee in, hug it in, take an exhale, inhale, stretch long again, and exhale, bring your hands down by your sides. So we're going to prepare for Shavasana, and I'm going to allow you to have what, get whatever you need for Shavasana. So take some time if you want to get a bolster, or if you want to place something over your eyes, Take this time to give yourself this Shavasana. You can have a blanket over you. Sue put a blanket over her hips. That's just really grounding. Taking your feet <clears throat> wider than hip width distance apart and allow your toes to part out to the side. 
draw your shoulder blades together and allow your hands to um, go with your palms up. I'm gonna lower the lights just a little bit in here. You can do the same at your house. So at the end of Shavasana, I'm gonna be going through a little chant that my teacher taught me, uh, my teacher from the Chopra Center, Roger Gabriel. This is a very powerful Shiva mantra for health and longevity. It's called the Maha Mritunjaya mantra. So at the end of your Shavasana, I'll just kind of go through that chant as you're still lying in Shavasana. If you know the chant, you can come into it with me. If you don't know the chant, just listen to the vibratory quality of the words. It's in Sanskrit, and Sanskrit is a beautiful language, um, and the vibration is really the, the very powerful and healing aspect of it. Go ahead and take one more nice deep breath as you prepare for Shavasana. Exhale and release, letting go, enjoy your rest.
slowly begin to lengthen your breath. Maybe wiggle fingers and toes as you gradually reawaken your body. And take a moment to place your left hand over your heart and your right hand over your left hand. One of the things we practice in yoga a lot is making this connection with the heart and the body, the mind and the body. And we even call it a mind-body connection. We don't have to actually connect it because it's always already connected. It's just that sometimes we forget. And the heart is the place where we find this connection with every heartbeat. And maybe in the stillness and in the quiet of your body, you can feel your heart beating. And allow that heartbeat to remind you that that's not only your connection to your mind and body, but it's your connection to every single person on the planet. We all have these beautiful heartbeats, our life force energy that is within us. So as you're feeling your heartbeat, listen to the words of this Maha Mrityunjaya mantra and listen to the vibration and allow it to maybe feel the vibration within you too. And maybe we can then share that vibration out with everyone. Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugandim Pushti Vardhanam Urva Rukamiva Bandhanaha Rith Yur Mukshi Amamrita Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugandim Pushti Vardhanam Urva Rukamiva Bandhanaha with your mukshi amamrita. Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugandim Pushti Vardhanam Urva Rukamiva Bandhana With your mukshi amamrita. Slowly begin to deepen your breath. And on your next inhale, maybe bring your arms overhead. And as you exhale, draw your knees into your chest. <clears throat> and just make your way to your right side. And stay on your right side for a couple of breaths. Taking this time to offer yourself some gratitude. Very slowly press your hands into the mat and then just come on up to seated. Bring your hands together in front of your hearts one more time, pressing your palms into one another. So thank you all so much for joining us today for yoga. It's just always our honor to be here with all of you, to share this yoga practice with you in hopes that it helps you in some way for clarity in the mind, in the body. And remember, yoga is so great for meeting us where we are exactly in life. So namaste, everyone. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste.